I'm going to talk about prepared food donations in particular, and I'm going to walk through some of the things and benefits for that, uh, some of the issues and some of the processes that, that go into donating surplus food. But when you think about the amount of carbon that's been invested in food that's been prepared, you know, that's been planted and cultivated, harvested, transported, processed, prepared, and cooked, and then to consider throwing it away is just it really adds, adds insult to the whole injury up to that point. I've not been in any, any restaurant where I've met a person who's got a passion for donating or passion for uh, preparing food for people that just loves to throw it away. So we, we say that the program, in essence, is a simple and a socially responsible alternative to throwing away surplus food. Now, when I look at the list of people on the call with the NRA and Sodexo and Feeding America, um, you probably, among that group, wonder who Food Donation Connection is. So I'm going to give you just a real quick tutorial on who FDC is. We've been around since about 1992. We were founded uh, by a guy who came out of the restaurant industry. And now, 22 years later, we've developed a process where we actually coordinate donations. We are donor-facing. We don't handle the food or touch the food like Feeding America does, but we coordinate a program for the donor. And it, it started with restaurants, but now it's into convenience stores, uh, grocery stores, airports, airports with HMS hosts and their motorways, hospitals like uh, St. Jude, uh, many others. So we, we actually help the, the donor get their food to the end user. To do that, we're basically a matchmaker. We link with local nonprofits. We work with a number of agencies coast to coast, and now we're into UK and Ireland as well, where we find local charities who are qualified that can pick up the food on a regular basis. So they get the food for free, but they've got to be um, willing to pick it up on a regular basis. We're also a supporter. We have a, a, a call center, what we call it the Harvest Support Center. It's a live answer call center where if there anyone from the restaurant or grocery store or the charity has a question, common issue, there wasn't a pickup, they need some other um, materials, we'll provide that when they call in. And we do a lot of outbound calls as well to make sure things are going well. And we're a documenter. We document the donations. In the early days, it was via fax. You know, you'd, you'd have a donation log and put a fax together. Uh, and send that in. Now it's all web-based and much easier. FTC is now also a tracker. We track the donations for the donor, and then we report back to them. They want to use it for CSR, for sustainability, for tax purposes. So that's kind of the niche we fill in, in this. And in those 22 years, there's been about 340 million pounds donated. That's diverted from landfills to uh, people that in need. And Laura mentioned something a few minutes ago about uh, in the team or the employee morale. That's one of the benefits. I'm going to go through a list of benefits with the employees, the community, the environment, um, economics, and things like that. So again, employees love to um, create food to, uh, to prepare and to serve, but they don't like to throw it away. And now, just last year alone through our program, about 15,000 locations donated in 2013. So in the community, there's another benefit there. This is Maria. She's in a soup kitchen in Atlantis creating a 40-gallon vat of macaroni. And she got some food donated from a local steakhouse. It was steak trimmings. So there was two or three sheet trays of steak. And it was got it cooked off and then put it into that um, stew she was making. And the men off the street, those 50 guys at lunch that day, just uh, enjoyed it and, and told her how they appreciated how much meat she had put it in. It was something that you and I might have taken for granted. but. But the donation from that steakhouse really made the day for those guys. And the charities last year alone, uh, there were about 8,000 charities collected food in 2013. And when you look at the numbers, there was about 1.6 million pickups just through this program. And it's not a lot of food each pickup. It might be 20 or 30 pounds. So it's not a lot of uh, weight or volume each pickup. So it doesn't take a lot to make a difference. It's just a, a small amount from a lot of locations makes a big difference. It also helps the environment. We're all probably familiar with that. Uh, the more food that's donated or composted or whatever is the less food that goes to the to landfills. You know, last couple of years, it's been around 36 million pounds each year has been diverted from, from the landfill and saved part of the environment. Quality of the customer might be something that some people don't often think about, but when you consider that projections aren't perfect, it's hard to know, you know, if you should um, run out or if you should carry over. A lot of times carry over is not something that that they should do. Um, so when you're faced with a choice to run out or carry over, remember there's that third, third option to donate. And there are some economic reasons to donate surplus food. First off, you know, the EPA, as Elise had mentioned, has a food waste recovery hierarchy, which is a great model to use. 
Uh, none, of us, none of us want to create food just to donate, but <clears throat> so there's source reduction. And when there is a surplus of wholesome food, you can feed people. If it's preps or scraps or something, you might go to animals, you know, oils to industrial uses. Composting is great, but don't use good food to do it, I always say. And on the source reduction, the donors we work with have taken a look at their donations and said, you know, we can, we can do this different, and we can make, uh, make fewer mistakes or prepare less in the first place. So that's an economic benefit to reduce their food cost. And on the tax savings piece, the IRS has created something to provide an enhanced tax deduction for those who donate surplus food, and it encourages food donations. And really, when you look at the numbers, it uses what might be considered public funds, you know, to your tax dollars efficiently. So that's a good way to do it. So we say, let's make first things first. You can make it happen. Uh, so the acronym FIRST stands for food safety. That's really the first thing to be thinking about, because yes, there's liability protection, but you never want to make someone sick or even be, you know, have your name in the media for that type of thing. And identify items, the type of food items that can be donated. You know, it's wholesome, prepared food in most cases. Um, so it can be things like that. It could be items that are um, either components of meals or a finished product. It might be it's a pizza or a chicken that's finished, or maybe it's a component. You know, it's a uh, part of a plated meal that's uh, donated. And the regular pickup schedule is real key because it's, it doesn't always work when you call every time you have food. You know, you want to be linked up with someone that's got, got a commitment to come by on a regular schedule a couple of times a week to pick up the prepared food that's been, that's been cooked, prepared, never served, and then it's captured, typically cooled and frozen, and then it can be picked up just by selected charities, uh, qualified charities that are trained in food safety and probably 501c3s. Tracking the donations is important so you know it, where the food went for traceability reasons as well as for uh, tax purposes. And then savings can be in the form of yeah, tax savings or it could be in the form of uh, landfill fee offsets or uh, food savings, food cost savings, and that type of thing. So that's the gist of uh, the Prepared Food Donation Program. And here's my contact information.